Previously on Big Brother 4, eight strangers moved into the Big Brother house where they were confronted with the news that five of their exes would be joining them as fellow house guests. No! The original eight made a pact to get rid of the exes first. No! In the first head of household competition, a deal was cut between chums, sparing Justin and Robert from possible nomination. I got you. I got both of you. Go. And Nathan was crowned the first head of household. Congratulations, Nathan. As the first nomination ceremony approached, cracks started to appear in the original alliance of eight. Never think for a moment that we're not eight. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> and Erica and Scott seemed primed for possible eviction. I'm very pissed off at Eric and, Nick and Scott right now. One of us gotta go. But ultimately, Nathan stuck with the Elite Eight, nominating exes, G and Amanda. Amanda, in a game sense, I feel like, you know, I, don't, I can't trust you. Upsetting Scott in the process. I'm gonna do everything I can in this house to send that hick boy home. Will Scott jump to his ex, Amanda's defense, and turn the Elite Eight against him in the process? And tonight, one of these house guests will leave the Big Brother house. This is Big Brother 4. Amanda, G, I've chosen you guys. <clears throat> Amanda, the reason I've chosen you is because I don't trust you. G, I just need somebody to, to compare up against Amanda. I knew I was going to be nominated just for some weird reason, but the only thing that bothered me was him saying that he didn't trust me. It just seemed really harsh for the first week. Right. I'm fine. I knew. I thought he would go the safe route, you know, the whole speech, you know, Nathan's speech. So definitely it was a surprise when he told um, Amanda that I don't trust you and G is there kind of as a, you know, as a comparison to you. I just thought the whole way uh, Nathan handled the uh, that event, I thought it was bull. Oh, Amanda, I just don't trust you. I just don't trust you, Amanda. I haven't had the chance to know you, but you obviously don't want to slable me. So, hey, you're up for uh, to get out of here. I just think that three girls fawning over one guy, the guy being Nathan, is enough. I nominated Amanda for eviction because I just felt like no one trusted her in our alliance. I nominated G just primarily as a pawn. You know, I think Amanda needs to go. Oh. I'm sorry. That's okay. I would not have given the same speech. It's a hard thing. I'm not critical of Nate because I've never walked in those shoes and there's a lot of pressure on him. I wouldn't have said anything about trust. Today's nominations were really, really exciting. It was just great to see Erica sweat her ass off, man. She was shaking at the end of that thing. I kind of put on a little act that I was a little bit um, emotionally distraught about the whole situation. I don't know, just because I felt like it. Just because I wanted people to think that um, I was rattled, um, that I was emotionally invested. Not that I really, I don't I could really care less, actually. There was a little bit of acting on my part right afterwards when I saw Erica crying. She said that um, she didn't like to see people hurt and whatnot, and 
I'm thinking, how am I supposed to believe that when we all signed up for this for the same reasons? I got so, like, shaky. Everyone's probably staying away from me because they feel bad and they don't know what to say. <laughs> Everyone was around the kitchen having cookies and ice cream um, like we were celebrating. And I don't know, I just don't think that's smart. I think people need to play the, gosh, that was so hard, I feel horrible card, at least for a little bit. <laughs> People were kind of partying. Amanda was outside, um, just sitting there. That whole thing sucked. <laughs> it really did. Dude, that's only the beginning. I know, I just felt like... You and I should be, like, somewhat happy. What is that? We're supposed to be somewhat happy. I'm not happy at all. <laughs> stop. But it's like our ex is happy. Our ex is on the block. She hates me and I, I love her. Stop. This whole situation is from You hear that? Uh, you hate me and I love you. If you want to, you want to talk, I'm here. Lend an ear. Scott was very sweet. Scott, I, I think Scott was actually mad about the way that Nate said it, which I, I thought was sweet. Scott stepped up for sure. Are you okay? No, I'm not actually. <laughs> I feel a lot worse than I thought I would. Fight, fight to stay in. Yeah, but I think he made it very clear who he wants out. I don't know. We'll see. There's a Beetle Power competition. I gotta kick ass and take that. You do? Hell yeah. Me and uh, many of us. And then, no, you don't want to take it. Yeah. I gotta watch my f***ing back right now, at least, if I want to stay in the game, right? Uh, well, you're gonna stay in the game. I guess the uh, whole HOA thing and the nomination thing really brought out my, uh, my game side. I am speaking to, you know, people here and there, and I'm just trying to really gain everybody's total trust right now. You know, the votes aren't gonna be changed as much as you think they are. Because, like, I hear, you know, Alex say she's going to vote this way. No, I, I, I trust Alex and you, Robert. The only person that I'm just a little slight bit iffy is that I haven't spoken to Dana. Like, can you confirm that she, she is yeah, definitely absolutely. going for Amanda? Absolutely. What about, what about Michelle? Michelle feels like it's going to be a show blowout. She feels bad for Amanda, so she's like, she was, like, arguing with Nate that she wanted to, like, vote for Amanda just because she felt bad. But, like, Nate's been working on her. I, I worry about it. The, you know, the little ifs and buts, you know, like uh, uh, Michelle, like, you know, she's going, you know, like, she seems like she's kind of floating back and forth. Who could possibly vote for Amanda right now? Scott? Erica? We'll say Jack? David? David, he, I know he's, like, totally, like, the floater around the house. Like, they're all scheming. Everyone's scheming around. So that, bother, you know, that kind of worries me a little bit. I would say it could be a little tight if, if something went wrong. It could be a little tight. <laughs> I'm not done yet, I gotta dude. go bald! I told G that I would cut his hair for him. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> I kind of messed him up a little bit. There is like no hair right here! G let Scott get to him. And Scott had created this um, kind of bowl cut. G was almost in tears. He's like, Ali, please fix my hair, please. Why would you do so, that? Because he said that he could cut hair. Shave it, maybe. He said he was a I barber. Said I said <laughs> You said you were a barber! <laughs> <laughs> you said that to me. And G, being as gullible as he is, um, thought that, you know, Scott was an actual um, hairstylist slash barber, what have you, when all he is is a freaking waiter. I'm a waiter. <laughs> that is some funny. <laughs> <laughs> I said I was oh, around, dude. I'm about to shed a tear right now. Is it fixable in the back? I think it is fixable. She's doing the right thing. That's what I was about to do that before she rudely took over. Aw, it looks, I mean, you can't even tell. I'm so happy now that. Cause it looks like it's going like, like this. Like straight? Yeah. You, you want know, it to like, kind of angle? Like, yeah, maybe it's probably just cut like a little bit here. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Is that more angled for you? <laughs> That's what he wanted. What the hell happened to the left side of his head? He was like, shave it. <laughs> I look retarded, right? 
<laughs> can, can somebody help me? I would just shave it off if I were you. I, I didn't want to help him out, so, you know, I suggested that he should shave it all off, um, knowing that that would probably be even worse. He's kind of well, shaving it all, right? I, yeah. So then he was like, all right, just shave it. So then I just started shaving his head. Am I going up or am I going down? I don't know. Come <laughs> Oh! Oh my God! Oh my gosh! I didn't know what to do, so he was like, "Get a guy who knows how to shave head, like use the razor." Call the ranger. Dude. Oh! Dave, I'll give you a high and tight if you want one. Ranger haircut. Let's do that, man. You want to do that? That's the only haircut style that I can get because of my time in the army. I basically butchered him. Yeah. Dude, you did a good job. Thanks, dude. I think it looks horrible. I think G looks horrible right now. I think he looks like he definitely just stepped off the boat. It actually ended up uh, pretty cool, so uh, I, I like it. I, I'm digging it now. Troll man, troll. She's a wonderful man. She's a wonderful man. The man troll can. She can do it because she is a man. <laughs> Dana's a man troll. A man troll's dangerous. You gotta watch out for her. She's not very stable. I will blow this whole house up. <laughs> a superhero for the millennium. Is she a man? Is she a troll? Scott calls her the man troll. He doesn't like her at all. I don't know. I don't know if she knows that. I don't know. He called Dana a bitch. He calls her a man troll. What is that? I don't know. A man that looks like a troll. <laughs> like the Don't tell me. Man, that's a little disappointing. Dark, I was pissed. <laughs> and then I was like, maybe I shouldn't tell her. And then as soon as I came into the kitchen, she told me that Amanda told her. He's been calling me a man. She's a man troll. Bitch. Man troll, man troll, where are you, man troll? Come in. Yeah. I shouldn't take it worth anything, right? I mean, even no. if it is true, it doesn't really matter what anybody thinks of anybody else, but... I am a girl. For as much as I don't try to be the girly girl, I am a girl. I'm gonna let it go. I'm just gonna let it go. I am. Because it doesn't matter. Scott has done everything to get on my very last nerve. You piss me off, you gotta go. I swear, if I go, if I'm on that creek, he's going. He's my first. Eric and I got up this morning around 10 o'clock and no one else was up. It seemed to me that our activities were just kind of uh, normal and ho-hum. I didn't quite understand why she wanted to clean and not eat breakfast, but hell, that's all right for me. If you're gonna have a maid, you ain't gonna have a better maid than Eric. Working in the FBI for 30 years, I had long periods on surveillances. This is a three month surveillance. Like, that is the most interesting job, I think, ever. It was, yeah. Did you have to do any of that? No, I worked in, in the intelligence area. The people we have in this house are sophisticated, and I, and I think I've got a make on them. I think that's the coolest thing. Oh, yeah, I didn't see that. It was fun. Assets provide intelligence. You need an intelligence base. I learned a lot, man. Girl, like, in college and stuff about how life works. <laughs> you got to, man. My greatest asset in the house is Nathan. His charisma sets him apart. There's no doubt about it. Dude. Erica is a very smooth, cool person under control. David is smarter than he lets on. And I think mentally he'll kick anybody's ass in this house. June would be what we would call in the FBI a liability. She's not tough enough to stay in this house long unless we want to eat real well. Michelle's a girl 
and a house full of women. She's good eye candy. Dana is a person being sent from the other side. That is, she's committed to Justin. We're beginning to wonder whether she's double agent. Allison is a daddy's girl. I don't think she's a strong player. Scotty could wear thin on the other house guest. I think if you have a very strong personality, it may be fun at first, but you may weaken your strategy of survival in the long run. Justin is the strongest player in this house in terms of mental and physical ability. I don't think there's anything he can't do. He's absolutely focused. Need to get back in sync with you guys. If you listen and don't talk so much in any kind of situation where it's law enforcement or at the office or here under the pressure and fun of the Big Brother house, you do a hell of a lot better. Hey guys, uh, oh. let's go another round. It's a meeting. Once again, the power of veto will shake things up in the Big Brother house. Each week, we will have the opportunity to save one of the nominees from eviction. Everyone will compete, including the head of household and current nominees. The winner of the veto medallion can upset the balance of power in the house by taking one of the nominees off the chopping block, forcing the head of household to nominate a replacement. Don't worry, the head of household cannot nominate the veto holder. This year's veto is even more powerful because every veto is golden. Here she is. All right. The golden veto allows the nominees to veto themselves, saving them from possible eviction that week. I have to look out for myself and, and get that veto power because that means that I can take myself out of that, uh, the nomination block. If the head of household wins the golden veto, they can either keep their nomination intact or make a change. Tomorrow, we will compete for the veto. The difference is, is that this year you can take yourself off the block. Once again, take a look at I am going to try very hard to win the golden veto. I don't want either Amanda or G to win it and want to take themselves off. All right, this meeting is adjourned. I'm very excited to try and win the golden veto. It's absolutely great. Man, it, that kind of throws everything for a loop. I'm just going to try to try to win the veto if I can. Hey Amanda, you like, you like working on people, you trying to stay? Um, not really, yet, only because I'm not sure who to work. I think I'll be leaving. A year and a half, Amanda and I have been not together. Everywhere I went, I would think of her, and it's a bad place to do it on national TV to, uh, to, to tell the whole world that I'm still in love with my ex-fiance. There's nothing more I love, love in this world is to get a second chance from her. really enjoy the time. I know I know the first couple of days I was a total ass. I, I have a bad feeling about Scott. Scott's been running around. Well, professing his love to Amanda all of a sudden. I mean, a few days ago, he was cursing her. Actually, I was trying to have a mature conversation with you. Actually, shut up. I've had enough of you. And now he's telling her, I love you every five minutes. I honestly think that if Scott won the Golden Veto this week, he would use it to save Amanda. I have, like, this pile of just, like, you. <laughs> and I put it in the closet because <laughs> I couldn't, couldn't bear, like, to look at it. You know what I'm saying? So, because sometimes I go through my drawers and a picture of you would pop up. Yeah. And I'd just be like, ah. When we broke up, I, I was done. I wouldn't want to hurt his feelings, or I wouldn't want to, you know, have him take something the wrong way and kind of freak out. I'm just saying I really enjoyed the time that we got to spend together. I've missed you a lot. Big Brother? Then log on to CBS.com and subscribe for unlimited access 24-7. For exclusive live video stream, live chat, and more, log on now. You're just like a little rat that can sit in the corner. So I just laughed that out of nowhere. You honestly you just need to thank me. Sure. You've not said thank you at all. If it weren't for me and me letting you date me, you wouldn't be here. Oh. If I knew you were in here, I would have not came. I would have not came if you would have been. What the f 
I'm going to thank you for it. Because you're here. I don't want to be here. Well, they walk out that door. The hell is that? The only girl in this house that I'm not attracted to is Allison, my ex. You know, I've seen a different side of her that, you know, was kind of unattractive to me. You shouldn't be here. Why? Because I shouldn't have dated you. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't date. We were just buddies, right? Remember? <laughs> Justin is my ex-boyfriend. He will remain my ex-boyfriend. So you feel sorry for yourself. I don't feel sorry for myself. I feel sorry for you. Thank you. Because I do, too. <laughs> and I will only refer to him as my ex. If you had one more chance to have sex with Justin, oh, what'd you do? Yeah, that's that's sweet. Sweet. Oh, <laughs> Having sex with him wasn't bad, per se, and it's been a while. You gotta be truthful. Why not? Oh. Why not? I mean, you really got nothing to gain and nothing to lose. Except for maybe a boyfriend at home. What the hell is that? When we first walked out of the house today, we were all aware that it was going to be the Golden Veto. Like, I didn't know what to expect. And then I saw the ropes and the knots. Okay, guys, today will be our first Golden Veto competition. Yeah! Yeah, Golden Veto. The Golden Veto means that even if you are nominated for eviction, you can win the veto and remove yourself from nomination. So the stakes are high. The first veto competition is called Feeling Naughty. <laughs> and here is how it works. Connect the belt around your waist. You must twist the belt so the end of the rope is on your stomach. The object of the competition is to take your veto symbol and place it on the post. There is not enough slack in the rope to get to the post right now. Untie your knot to create slack. The person whose ring gets to the bottom of the post first will win the first golden power of veto and the power to change the nominations. If the power of veto is your greatest hope, make sure there is no knot left in your rope. Don't touch the knot. I kind of caught Scott touching his knot when he shouldn't have been. I don't think it's a secret that he and I have some kind of little tiff going on all the time. So are we ready? We're ready. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. When I saw that veto competition, I really knew exactly what to do. I was totally trying to kick ass and because I really wanted it. It definitely uses your brain and you need to have a little bit of agility and a little quickness too. I figured it was going to be a tough one. I just knew I wanted to win. You had to, I guess, climb through the knots and like twist around, and I was just like trying to follow it through. I was looking at them and I was trying to like literally undo them. And I was just watching Nate go crazy next to me and I was like, what's he doing? I just tried my best to really get it. I definitely didn't want a couple players getting it, uh, Scott and Amanda, because I want to secure the spots. Dana beat me. That's like split second. 
I hate to lose pretty much anything I do. I was disappointed that I got beat by a chick. I was pissed, but I still, at the same time, I did not realize how they had done it so quickly. I was, like, in shock that it was already over. I'm disappointed that I didn't grab that uh, veto power, and I was trying to really pull it off, but it just wasn't working. Our winner of the Rope Feeling Naughty contest is our lovely Dana. Yeah! Maybe by half a second. By a half a second. Half a second. Go, girl. I just really wanted to win a competition, you know? Like, I'm just so competitive by nature, and my time was, was due. Dana is still a little iffy in my mind. I don't want to assume that, you know, I am safe. Yeah, I'd like to believe it, and I do believe it right now, but I can't totally assume that. The girls are totally the strong influence for Nathan. I'm, I'm thinking about talking to Dana because her and Nate are very good friends. Good job, Thank you. But I don't know, I honestly don't know if she'll use it. Why is everyone talking about KFC boneless? A breakthrough. Ah! Ellie like just fell in love with you. You have to stand there and wear that all night. That's so hot. Nathan is just somebody that I am flirting with to win five hundred thousand dollars. You're undressed to impress. Sure do. By me flirting with him, I'm gonna be able to get more out of him. Whoa! Coming to daddy. Oh God, you're crazy. That's right, I think you should give me a massage. You know, Alice, she's kind of my girl. I think she wants me to make the first move. <laughs> <laughs> Can't see you, my head oh my god, I'm not kissing. You're very bruising. Just give me a kiss on the cheek. No, I'll give you one today. Nathan might be the biggest meathead I've ever met in my entire life. But he doesn't know what the hell is going on and he's messing up his game. But in a way, that's good for me because that's going to make him a target before I make myself a target. I'm just smelling you, yo. He's a very, very, very handsome guy. But probably not weekend or long-term material. No way. Kiss me. That wasn't that good. <laughs> That's all I got, baby. I'm so, I, was, I was picturing before that I had no business picturing because I'm not going to get any of it. Alice and Dana and I have been engaging in a lot of girl talk. We are always talking about guys. What were you going to say about Nate? He always brings up church. Church? Like, I believe in God. But is he a Mormon? What is he? Probably. He's a Mormon? I don't, I don't know. What are they in Oklahoma? Obviously, Nathan is like the Greek god of the house. He's adorable. I mean, he's every high school girl's wet dream. I mean, what can you say? Justin, what is he good? No. He's like, he makes the ugliest faces. Oh, my God, please. Ever. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, I would have to close my eyes. That's when it. you met him, was his ear like that? I don't know if I could get past that. Justin's got the bad ear thing going on. That's a problem. That's a turn off for me off the bat. His cauliflower is just like this red, throbbing, swollen thing, and a lot of girls can't get past it. You can't even tell me G was decent. He's a freak. Really? In bed. I'm starting to get really horny. It's going to be a problem. <laughs> I'm so... Dave's cute, though. Get with him. Dave? Oh, oh my God. God. He's an idiot, dude. David's a little bit of a nutcase. <laughs> He's cute though, huh? Oh! oh. His body's great. Can you imagine the faces he would make? If you get three girls together who are around the same age, there's gonna be a lot of girl talk. Yeah, I was looking at Erica's ass today, right? With clothes on, it looks better. But right. in her bikini, Ew. it's like. Sit, yeah, it sags. Yeah. Amanda's beautiful. I think she is, to an extent. She's to exotic an extent. pretty. But it's like... She's exotic pretty. Amanda's way too skinny, and her legs are not very attractive because she's so thin. Michelle's got a hot little body. I will not take that away from her. But I don't think her face is that pretty. I don't like her, but I think it looks like, like a little girl. Yeah, she's uh, like a little baby fat. I really don't think 
that if I were a virgin, I would have my butt hanging out all over the place because seriously, if you're not going to give it up, you really shouldn't be um, flashing it that way. See this? Not cool. Not cool? No. What is it, a muscle? No, it's a big fat hunk of cellulite. <laughs> no, it fat. looks like a muscle. As far as Allison goes, I don't think she has the prettiest face. If she were to get like a nose job maybe, I think her face would look a um, hundred times better. <laughs> Dana's eyes are like as huge as saucers. I definitely wouldn't want her hair. It's a little frizzy. Not to say, you know, that I'm perfect. As far as my body goes, definitely the soft, jiggly kind of girl. But I think I'm a real woman that way. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, you're not hearing this at home. It's girl talk. Enough of the breadcrumbs. Can you put the cheese and macaroni in the damn oven? Oh, God, I'm the biggest loser in the house. <laughs> Ice cubes. Oh my god. I guess we're done. Yeah, you might want to pull your crack of your ass up. Junie Kins, what's up, baby? It's going down. Dude, Don't give me that dope. fake ass wink. You found me, bitch. You want some of this? You can't handle this. God, he is like hot. Scott makes me like absolutely miserable. I can't even stand to be in the same room with him right now. We're gonna play yeah. go fish. Wanna play go fish? We're gonna play spoons later. I want to get in on that. Ow. I want to play... I want to play Chicks Get Naked and... Scott's a big turnoff. He's just repulsive to me. Yeah. If Scott would go and make, make... Oh, my God. So hey, hey, you know what? Take G out. I mean, to me, it's, it, it, the reason why I wasn't so excited because... Take it's not G a... off and put up. <laughs> you know what, Joe? No, if we post the guarantee he's gone, it doesn't matter. There's no repercussions. So when Matt is here for another week... Yeah, exactly. I say, I, I say that's the best. <laughs> that would be the money. I think it was June that brought up the idea of Dana actually using the veto power to take G off the block and put Scott up, which is, I think, is the best idea we can do. He could really be hero right now to all of us. He really could. <laughs> I think you, that. I like, if you put it that way, I think it might be. Yeah, you have seven also. We like him out. Look. <laughs> Exactly, well look, there's eight people yeah, that is. no, say eight people that feel the same way. What do you think? Don't hey, yo, Jim! Get up! What? No, no, no. We'll talk to him later. We'll go in the bed later and do the girl thing. I believe that at this point we have enough votes to get Scott out if we put him up there. In my perfect world, that's what would happen. G off, Scott on, Scott gone. How about I show you my sexy job? Change my variable. <laughs> <laughs> the coil up on you. Well, you can go ahead and get up on me. Okay. Why do you want to do it so bad? Because we got to I understand. Hey. I feel like he can stand anything. Exactly. He's, I know. I want him down here, too. But eventually, they're going to catch on him. I really am frustrated with Scott. Um, you know, I don't know how, lot, how much longer I can take of him, really. It's the whole original eight. You know, it's, you know, it's starting to crumble. Think about it. Let's just think about it. The only three people that would move for him are David, Jack, and Erin. That is it. Here's the situation, Jack. You know, I'm, I'm true to my word about the, the original eight. Yeah. But Scott, I don't know if you've been out there, but you know, he is driving everybody in crazy. And I totally understand you guys if you don't want to do it. But I'm, you know, everybody in this house are feeling uncomfortable, like threatened by the guy, like physically, like all the girls are like saying he's crazy. You can only take so much of the guy. You think we can rehabilitate him if we talk? Have you talked to him at all? I mean, I, 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 I think it's just a loose wire just spoke, ready to explode. I spoke to him. And what do you say? Well, we ought, to, we ought to consider that that's what everybody wants. I mean, Erica, if he called you an effing bitch and this and that, and, and then he comes up 10 seconds later and says, sorry, would you, would you accept that? You know, if he does it over and over, mm -hmm. no, yeah. he probably would not. It's just, it's, it's just so uh, disruptive. It is. It is. And, and I keep telling him, and uh, I know Eric has talked to him as well. Everybody has. We've all tried to get along. With, I've tried to get along with him. And I, honestly, I could probably put up with the guy. Mm -hmm. But I'm just, I'm sick of everybody coming up to me and griping and bitching about him. Mm -hmm. so we look to you as our leader for a lot of reasons. 
you know, everybody's stressing out about him. Scott's day is definitely numbered. It's a matter of time. why I went to sleep today I was a little depressed and just thinking about how I let myself go and how I let my feelings show for Amanda and it was just it made me feel extremely weak extremely vulnerable and I don't like feeling like that for the last you know couple of days Scott's been s disappearing all afternoon he's been sleeping for I'm talking like four or five hours at a pop when he finally got up um, he kind of drifted from group to group You can tell that he's miserable. He's just sleeps all the time. Yeah. I feel like I've just been I've been just trapped in a bad nightmare. Circus animal for this show. I feel like a circus animal. Spin around. Let me see the camera to get you at this angle. Let me see the crack of your ass. I'm a human being, and that is a circus animal. He was kind of wandering. He was definitely getting frustrated. And I think at one point, he finally lost it. There was like four of us talking in the bathroom, and I, ke I hear this thump. What is he doing? I'm like, what is that? I'm like, what the hell is that? And I get up, I run to the kitchen, and Scott is throwing chairs around the house. Kitchen table chairs around the house. He lost it and just went crazy for no reason. Scott, please go to the diary room. You come in and get me. Come in and get me. Can't handle me. Take three of you. Scott, what's going on? Nothing. Nothing. Why are you throwing it around? Just letting, them, just let, letting off a little steam. Oh, he was just joking around, but he was just yeah, joking I don't, around. I don't care how baby toss it was. It scared the out of me. The vibe was just... I cannot explain it. I really can't even find the words. Um, I just did... Uh, we, none of us felt safe. What's going on? I just can't deal with it. What, what can't you deal with? This whole f thing. It just pisses me off. Okay. I'd like to take one of this piece right here and just throw it right at the Scott, Scott, Yeah, we Scott. need it. This is a very, very difficult position to be in for all of us. He was saying things that, that were a little hostile, but he, he didn't see, he almost had like a, a grin on his face, or a smirk, so I didn't really take him to be serious. You want to talk to me? Scott, Scott. Oh, okay, I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm totally kidding. Okay, he's making me crazy. What's up? Makes me jump. <laughs> what? What are you doing? I'm blowing off a little steam. I assume that it had something to do with me, obviously. Um, not necessarily in, in a good sense, but more just he was frustrated. To me, you're just very back and forth. And that's what I don't understand. Back and forth with what? Just in everything. You, like, for example, oh, I like, I love you, I want to be with you. That's the way I feel. The old feeling is just just manifested himself and came back and hit me right in the face. The constant back and forth split personality thing? No, that's joking then around. The of I, don't, see, I, don't, I just don't get it. Like, I really don't get it. I don't know what you're trying to do. And everyone's freaking out, and I don't, I don't think really you want to leave. And I, I don't that, care that's what's going to make you leave. Good. Let them, let them kick me out. that you're a threat in the house. Good. Let them, let, Why do you want to leave? Let them leave. Because when you first came into the house, I didn't know how to handle the situation. So the only way I know how to handle the situation is to be an ass. I don't see myself lasting too much longer here. The first day I was in here, I wanted to leave because that nonsense X factor. The things I've said to you over there, the things I've said to you over there about how I feel about you and how a day, a day has, hasn't gone by that I've thought about you is, is absolutely truthful. I would love nothing more for you to give me a second chance, but you know what? I don't see it happening, and that's, that's okay. I mean, that's all right. I'll go on living my life, and my life will be fine. I mean, it'll be a little empty because you're not so in then, it. Why do you say that you... Then you also said that you enjoyed spending time with me this week, which I, I'm assuming was a lie. No, which is, which is you're true. you're hating and throwing no, chairs I, because I, of it. I, so I don't really understand. It's, it's mixed emotions. I love spending time with you, but I hate spending time with you. I just got taken out of my game when Amanda walked out of it, walked into the door, and, that was, and that's just it, man. I'm just like, I'm just like freaking out. I don't want you to feel this way. 
but I also know that I will be leaving. And I'm saying, I know this means a lot to you, so don't get up by doesn't staring mean, at the house. Any, it doesn't mean anything to me. It really doesn't. You don't understand. It doesn't mean anything to me. It did mean something to me. It doesn't mean anything to me anymore. I don't really give a shit about the game anymore, so I'm a loose cannon right now. I mean, I still have the same strategies as I did, but I don't really give a shit if I go next week. It would almost be a good thing if I went next week. Why? Because it does Because of one week that I was here? I'll be gone. So you know what? It. I don't care. That's not the point. Listen, I appreciate you coming out and saying and talking to me. Okay? Thanks. Hey, Scott told Jack to come ask me if we can have a meeting. Uh, and, and I said sure, so I kind of gathered everybody around the couch. The reason why I uh, did kind of get like, like an overload is because basically um, seeing Amanda here, again, has brought, brought me back to the time where we broke up. Because she's been able to go on with her life, and I haven't been able to go on with my life. It's just been a, the worst year and a half of my life. And I just want to say that in no, in no way, shape, or form do I want to leave here. I'd love to stay and continue on playing the game. And that I'm truly, truly very sorry to each and every one of you. I just got a couple things. Um, yeah, sure. A lot of us around here kind of feel like this is honestly the worst place for you to be right now. You know, I would understand with my ex coming in, you know, how hard it would be for me. And, you know, a lot of, you know, not necessarily me, but a lot of other people feel very uncomfortable, threatened, possibly. And, you know, we do feel like, you know, this is definitely the worst environment for you to be in. And I'm not saying anything about it. I'm not saying walk or anything, but, you know, it's something to think about. If it's going to affect, affect how you treat other people as far as physical, you know what I mean? You know, it's just not healthy for anybody, anyone. Well, I haven't touched anybody here and put my hands on anybody here, and I don't intend on doing something like that. What if the, what if the chair bounced off the wall and hit someone then? You could say, what if it, the chair hit me in the head? It didn't, though. But what if? It did, but it didn't, though. But there was a chance. It's not going to happen again. But there was a chance. It didn't, though. And I'm done apologizing to you. I apologized to you. I told you how I felt from my heart, but I'm not going to stick my head up your ass. That's okay? Good. I'm trying to be nice. Okay. Scott, it's, it's just a little hard for some people to accept the apology only because Number one, it's, it's probably, you know, maybe the, the third or fourth time we've heard you apologize. And you have, you know, come out and told us that your, your biggest weakness is you flip out and then what you'll do is go around and apologize to everybody. And that's why everybody can sit here and say he's not sincere about it. Anything else? No, that's it. All right. Scott finally went into the diary room and we were told that he wasn't coming back. He really is a good guy. He really needs to take time to focus on himself and and really find out who he is and what he wants and and, and realize that, you know, some of these things that he just shuts down about aren't necessarily the end of the world. And I think that he will realize that life does go on. Are we getting over this? Yeah, we're it'll getting take over it. It'll take us a couple of days, right? Yeah, we're going to be fine. Okay. We're going to be fine, and you know what? There'll be a big light pressure, or, you know, a big pressure off the house, and and before you know it, we'll be thinking about strategy yeah. <laughs> again. Will Dana use the power of veto? And who will be evicted from the Big Brother house? Find out tomorrow night at 9, 8 central, on Big Brother 4.